untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Dragon Graveyard combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Dragonstorm, a 9 mana sorcery that lets us search your library for a Dragon permanent card and put it onto the battlefield. This card also has Storm, meaning that when we cast it, we get to copy it for each spell cast before it this turn. That also includes spells the opponent may have cast during our turn. And a Dragon Storm is capable of winning the game on the spot in this deck if we cast it with a Storm Count of 2, and sometimes even a Storm Count of 1 is enough, which is just two copies of a Dragon Storm if we already have one of our key dragons in the graveyard. Now, how are we planning on casting a 9 mana sorcery in a format that's as fast as historic? Well, that's where Mystic's Mastery comes in handy. A 4 mana sorcery that can exile an instant or sorcery from our graveyard, and then we get to copy it and cast the copy without paying its mana cost. So the goal is to discard Dragonstorm from our hand, so we can then cast it for just 4 mana using Mystic's Mastery. This also has the added advantage of increasing our storm count, because we're casting the Mastery first and then we're casting Dragonstorm. We already get to resolve 2 copies, which is sometimes enough to win the game on the spot. And sometimes we have another copy of Mystic's Mastery in our graveyard, in which case we can cast Mystic's Mastery, exiling a second Mystic's Mastery, which can now exile Dragonstorm, and now our storm count is 2, which is guaranteed to be lethal. So how does the combo with Dragonstorm actually work? Well, the first copy wants to search up Terror of the Peaks, a 5 mana 5-4 dragon, saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target, so this can also target the opponent directly to potentially close out the game. Then the second copy of Dragonstorm wants to find Bladewing the Risen, a 4-4 legendary zombie dragon that when it enters a battlefield lets us return a dragon permanent card from our graveyard to the battlefield. And then the final copy of Dragonstorm wants to get a second copy of Bladewing. Now because it's legendary we're not allowed to have two copies in play at the same time, so one of them will be immediately put into the graveyard, but we can still resolve the trigger from Bladewing, allowing us to get back a dragon from our graveyard. And lo and behold, we're gonna get back the very same Bladewing that we just put there with a legendary rule. So this sets up an infinite loop where we can keep getting back Bladewing from our graveyard over and over again. Now by itself this doesn't accomplish anything, but with a Tower of the Peaks in play, we get to deal 4 damage to any target with each iteration of the loop. So at some points we can simply decline to get back a Bladewing, let all those Tower of the Peaks triggers resolve, and deal however much damage we need to close out the game, potentially killing some creatures in the process as well if necessary. So that's our combo. Now if we already have one of the dragons in the graveyard, we simply need to search up two dragons. Let's say we have a Terror of the Peaks in the graveyard, then we first get a Bladewing getting back Terror of the Peaks, and then the second Dragonstorm gets another Bladewing, which sets up the combo now with a Terror of the Peaks in play. If we already have a Bladewing in the graveyard, then we first get a Terror of the Peaks, and then the second Dragonstorm will get another Bladewing, which is also enough to set up the combo. And then to help us out we have the full playset of Solve the Equation, a sorcery that lets us search our library for an instant or sorcery card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So this can help us find a Mystic Mastery if we don't have one in hand already, and if we're up against a control deck with counter spells, it can also help us find a Pact of Negation, which is also very important in those matchups, as a 0 mana instant that lets us counter target spell, which seems incredibly overpowered until you read the fine print. So under normal circumstances, we wouldn't be able to play Pact until we have at least 5 lands in play so we can pay for it, but because our combo allows us to win the game on the spot, we can fire off a Pact of Negation on turn 4 to help protect our Mystic's Mastery to force through our combo, as we don't have to worry about having to pay for it. And we can even cast multiple copies of Pact in the same turn, so if the control opponent lets us resolve, solve the equation, and we already have a Pact of Negation or Mystic's Mastery in hand, then we can usually win on turn 4, as the opponent is unlikely to have two counter spells they can play in the same turn to prevent us from comboing. So as a control player, if you're playing against this build, you usually want to counter solve the equation, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. 
And then the rest of the deck includes a few additional combo pieces like a Merchant Ultimatum, which is basically the same as a Dragon Storm in that we want to cast it for free using Mizzix's Mastery. This is a 7 mana sorcery that lets us search our library for up to 3 monocolored cards with different names and exile them. Opponent chooses one of them that we have to shuffle back into our deck, and then we get to cast the other 2 cards without paying their mana costs. So Emergent Ultimatum of course wants to find a copy of Dragonstorm, which the opponent is almost never going to give us, otherwise that's going to win the game on the spot, because now our storm count is high enough by going Mystic's Mastery into Emergent Ultimatum, plus maybe another spell into a Dragonstorm, that's certainly high enough to guarantee a kill. But we of course need to get two other monocolored spells that can also guarantee a win if we don't get our Dragonstorm, and that's where the one copy of Omniscience comes in handy. So this is a card we never really want to draw and always want to have in our deck so we can find it with the Merchant Ultimatum, a 10 mana enchantment that lets us cast spells from our hand without paying their mana costs. And then the third card we want to get with the Emergent Ultimatum is Solve the Equation, which allows us to find another Dragonstorm, which we can now cast from our hand for free using Omniscience. So no matter what, the opponent will be facing our dragons, assuming we still have an Omniscience in our library to find. And then the rest of our deck has some cheap draw and discard effects to help us fill the graveyard to set it up for Mystic's Mastery. So at one mana we've got Faithless Looting to draw two and then discard two, can also be flashed back out of our graveyard for three mana. We've got Faithful Mending at 2 mana, which is very similar, just an instant speed version that also gains 2 life, which can pad our life total against aggressive creature decks. And then finally, Otherworldly Gaze, which is a 1 mana instant, allowing us to look at the top 3 cards of our library, putting any number of them into our graveyard and the rest on top in any order, and can be flashed back for just 2 mana, so we can usually cast it twice to set up our graveyard nicely. And then the mana base has 22 lands total, including a few fast lands with two copies of Inspiring Vantage and four Spire Bluffs, which are very good in the early game. Probably don't want to play all eight copies because they can be a little awkward when we need an untapped land on turn four for our Mystic's Mastery. And then we've got a few shock lands with Sacred Foundry, Hallowed Fountain, and Steam Vents, and a few pathways to round out the mana base. Don't actually have any basic lands in the deck, which could be punished by Field of Ruin, but haven't really run into that problem so far, and we do need as much mana fixing as possible to cast a turn 1 looting, followed by a potential turn 2 faithful mending, so we do need as many dual lands as possible. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? For a 1 lander it's actually not bad, since we have Dragonstorm and Mastery, and then looting to help us find more lands, so I'll try it. Probably don't need two copies of Pact of Negation, but I'll gladly hang on to one of them. Alright, land lands, and then I guess I discard Dragonstorm and one Pact. Could also discard a Mystic's Mastery, so Mastery into Mastery getting Dragonstorm is enough storm count to win the game on the spot. The only potential concern is a discard spell taking Mastery, then I wouldn't be left with any of them which would be pretty bad, and we don't know what our opponent is up to yet. So I'll discard a Pact. And then we can maybe still discard Mastery to the looting if we don't expect any discard effects. Alright, opponent on a Ninja deck with a Thousand Faced Shadow. So for now I can Gaze. Might see Ninjutsu here on turn 2. Yeah, Infiltrator will draw a card. So we can expect our opponent to have a couple discard effects along the way. Maybe a counter spell too, like Spell Pierce. So happy to have a Pact of Negation in hand. And then Mastery can go to the graveyard. I do want a fourth land, so we'll grab the pathway which doesn't cost us any life. And yeah, then we're in great shape here. Don't really need to do anything, but we can maybe flash back Gaze. We have double Mastery, so a single discard spell is not enough. And we can beat one counter spell with Pact. And by going Mastery into Mastery, our Storm Count is enough to win as well. So we'll take two. Opponent draws. And we'll go for Gaze. And then probably put everything in the graveyard here. 
All right, drew another pact. Perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. So now we can beat a combination of two disruptive spells. So mastery into mastery. Probably see some form of interaction here. Nope. Go for Dragon Storm. Storm count is two, so three copies total. And we can protect with double packed in case of any bound spells. They could easily have an unsummon. Then goes upstairs. And get another blade wing. And that's game. Just have to go through the loop a few times, but... Yep, opponent did have a bounce spell indeed. But Pact will counter that. And since we win the game on the spots, it doesn't matter that we only have four lands in play. So that's why Pact is so powerful in this strategy. Alright, so that's 16 damage on the stack. So no need to get back Bladewing. And there we have it, pretty quick once we actually combo off, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a Keeper, we've got Mastery and Dragonstorm. Still missing a looting effect, so that's what we'll be trying to find with our gaze. Facing turn 1 Elves, so if this is Elves Tribal, we could be in uh, trouble as they can sometimes win on turn 4, which would be fast enough. Another elf, so at least no turn to Archdruid, which is good. And yeah, there's the Mending we want. And then I can keep Vantage as an unsap land that doesn't cost us life. Another Gaze we can put in the graveyard. Okay, so one to white mana here. So we can cast Mending and then... The life gain from Mending will also help potentially pad our life total a little bit. Opponent's got 6 mana for a Ceratops, okay. Kind of surprising, so maybe it's just a green Stompy deck and not Elf Tribal, which is probably good for us. Another Elf. So right now it's unlikely for the opponent to kill us in time, but we'll see. Go for Mending, and then discard Dragon Storm and Ultimatum, which will give us a Storm Count that's high enough to get there. So we'll pass. Flashback Mending is the plan. Could also cast one from hand, not that it really matters. And then next turn we should have the kill, and can't... Imagine a mono green deck having too much in the way of interaction, unless they play a scavenging ooze right now. It's gonna be a great henge, that's fine. Into a primal might. Okay. Flashback mending. Don't need spire bluff, gaze can go. And we'll go for Mastery, and then we have to go for Ultimatum instead of Dragonstorm to increase our Storm Count. And then Ultimatum could go for the Omniscience Package, although getting a Mystic's Mastery to cast a Dragonstorm in our graveyard is already enough. So I guess we can show off the Omniscience Package just in case, but getting a Mastery alongside Dragonstorm would have been sufficient. So we don't get Dragonstorm, but we do get Omniscience and solve the equation, which can get a Dragonstorm. And here we are. Get Tower of the Peaks, can get two of them, which will speed up the process a little bit. And then get Double Bladewing. 
And there we have it. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand I don't love. We don't have blue mana for mending. And Omniscience in hand could also be a liability. This is... potentially better. We're still missing... Red mana, although we should be able to find it with Gaze, especially after flashing it back. And then we need Mizzix Mastery or solve the equation for Mizzix Mastery. I'll try it. And then one card to the bottom. Might have to be packed. Opponent's not playing Companion. Sometimes control decks play Companions like Kahira. Could also get rid of a land since we need to find red mana anyway. On the off chance that I need Pact. Uh, against turn 1 Mountain, we probably won't need it. So land would have been better. Especially a land that doesn't cost us any life. Vantage is a good draw. Do I want to Gaze first? I usually prefer Gaze on 1, because then flashing it back is more mana efficient on 2. So let's try that. And then we can Looting on 3. Gives us more time to potentially draw cards that we want to discard as well. Second ringleader. So all their creatures in hand now pretty much have haste. Okay, Dragonstorm and Mastery. Perfect. And advantage so I don't take too much damage off my lands. So we can keep the rest on top. And uh, I guess we'll draw... The Mystic Mastery right now doesn't really matter in which order we do it. So still will have to shock myself with Fountain as my fourth land. So I guess we'll uh, flash back Gaze to maybe look for an untapped land. Alright, opponent's stuck on two lands apparently, so that's gonna give us a glimmer of hope here that we don't die on turn four. Okay, there's the Painless Land on turn 4 to preserve my life total as much as possible. Draw the Vantage on turn 3. And then now we can Looting, Discarding, Emergent Ultimatum, and Mastering to Ultimatum should be enough, especially now with the Dragonstorm available as well. But Ultimatum would have been good enough, assuming we don't draw Omniscience. And now at 14 I feel pretty safe. There's Annex, with a pretty high Devotion and Haste. So it's gonna hit us for 8, so yeah, if they didn't miss their land drop, they probably would have killed me. But luckily they did. Mending also could have gained a bit of life, but... Let's get our Ultimatum to increase our Storm Counts. And then we can skip Omniscience if we want, just get Dragon Storm, Mizzix Mastery, and... Doesn't matter what else, but I guess we can get like a Terror of the Peaks. Since we already have a Dragonstorm in the graveyard, we don't have to go through the Omniscience. So, Mastery goes for Dragonstorm. Always important to order your spells from Emergent Ultimatum correctly. So you actually get the Tower of the Peaks in play here. And yeah, Double Blade Wing will end the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand has potential. Um, double solve the equation is a little redundant unless we need to get a Pact of Negation. And then we're hoping to draw either Emergent Ultimatum or Dragonstorm to discard with our lootings. I'll try it. Also need to find blue mana along the way. Alright, Shadow Spear points towards a life gain deck. Usually a fine matchup, as I don't really interact. And unless they've got the infinite combo, also aren't fast enough. So what do we discard? Probably don't have time for double solve the equation. And then... Could discard looting if we're going for mending on turn 2 instead. 
and then turn three we can flash back looting if necessary. Hang on to four lands. Daxos. And there's a Pact, not that we really need it in this matchup. So we can go for a Mending. Heliods, that's fine. Alright, another Mastery. Probably safe to discard alongside a Pact of Negation. So that can also increase our Storm Count if necessary. There's Emergent Ultimatum, perfect. So now we can Looting. And then we're just hoping not to draw into Omniscience, but now that we found a Dragonstorm to discard, that's not even a concern. Alright, so everything is ready to go for next turn. A Jani is not gonna really change anything. Turns on Heliod, but they're still about 10 damage short. All right, so mastery into mastery would increase our storm count the most, and then emergent ultimatum. Although going for a dragon storm would have been enough. Omniscience, dragon storm, already have a solve the equation in hand. So go for mastery, which can also go for dragon storm. A lot of ways to lead to the same end result. And then our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and how do we like this hand? It's not all that amazing, as we're missing a big spell and a discard outlet. And double solve the equation is pretty slow, even if one of them can get Mizzix Mastery, so I think this is a mulligan. This one is just missing a discard outlet, whether it's looting or mending. And then we should be good to go. So we've got eight outs. Solve the equation can maybe still help, although we're gonna be a turn slow. I think it's still a keep. So certainly not the best starting hand, but Gaze is going to help potentially find a looting effect. Up against Blue Reds, could be a Phoenix deck, could be a Control deck, given that they haven't played anything yet. And a backup Mastery is not a bad idea if um, we're facing a counter spell. Although finding Pact of Negation would probably be better. And I still need a discard effect, so I probably just put all three in the graveyard. Or I can hang on to the fourth land, but fourth land is pretty replaceable. And if we keep stuff on top, then we also make the flashback gaze worse, potentially. Could have flashed back in my upkeep as well to potentially improve my draw step. I probably should have considered that in case I drew looting for the turn, which I could have still cast. But now we're just going to play this tapped and then flashback gaze in the opponent's turn. Hoping to find a looting effect as our opponent goes for iteration. So it could still be a Phoenix deck just with a slow start. Finds Consider, that will cast. And no looting, another gaze is useful, although we can put it in the graveyard to flash back. Don't need Dragonstorm. And yeah, this looks like a Phoenix deck, so don't expect to need Pact of Negation. So we'd rather dig for lands. And then it's probably worth it to upkeep gaze. Although now I guess that we put Dragonstorm in the graveyard, I could just draw land for Master into Master into Dragonstorm, so no, we'll just take our draw step. All right, no land, sadly, but amending I can main phase to hit my land drop. And then ultimatum and dragonstorm are probably fine to discard. Okay, so we've got everything set up for next turn. 
after a bit of a rocky start. And as long as their opponent taps out, then uh, they won't have any way to interact. They could still have some removal to potentially play on Terror of the Peaks. But if our storm count is high enough, we can get two of them. And it looks like our opponent's going to be tapping out anyway to get our client in play. So, there's no concern. Card like Unholy Heat could kill a Terror of the Peaks if Delirium is enabled. Sir so opponent fully tapped out. Phoenix comes back. And generally speaking, the Phoenix matchup is a favorable one since they're unlikely to kill on turn 4, even though they're certainly capable. So even if we're on the draw, we still have time to set up our combo. So might as well increase our storm count a little bit. Go for Emergent Ultimatum, but our opponent knows what's incoming and concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Got Mastery, Ultimatum to discard, and Looting to put it in the graveyard, so... Just need to hit our land drops, and uh, we should be good to go. Right now we're not allowed to find Omniscience, because we need it with Ultimatum. Turn 1 Speaker, so... Looks like a green-white, maybe Angel life gain deck. Usually doesn't have much in the way of interaction, so that's a good matchup for us. Got to Mending to gain a bit of life as well. Do they have a turn to Bishop? It's going to be a Voice of the Blessed instead. Alright, that could apply quite a bit of pressure. I guess it's possible they're playing the Scurry Oak plus Heliot combo, which could potentially help them deal infinite damage, but we can also deal infinite damage even through quote-unquote infinite life gain on Arena. So we'll pass it back. So probably no need to get Pact of Negation in this matchup. So we can afford to potentially cycle more through the deck, gain more life with Amending. Although we also want to avoid drawing too many cards and finding our Omniscience. Unless we can find uh, Dragonstorm. In which case it doesn't matter. So opponent does have Heliot, but they don't have a way to gain life like uh, a Soul Warden to go with the Scurry Oak, at least not yet. Blade Wing I'm happy to discard, and the land can go as well. Alright, probably fine to shock here. And then I can gaze, flashback gaze. If necessary. Although I don't expect it to be. Right, Righteous Valkyrie turns on Heliot. Opponent's got one card left in hand, so. Should be able to get there. Have enough life to play my Shockland, otherwise I could have gone for Mending instead of Gaze. But this just guarantees that I don't somehow draw Omniscience. Putting Master in the graveyard increases my Storm count, and then I'm happy to draw Pacts on the off chance that her one mana spell does something, but uh, I doubt it does. Go for mastery, into mastery, into emergent ultimatum. Storm count is as high as it's gonna have to be. Get omniscience, dragon storm, and already have a solve the equation, but I guess we'll still get one. And then I can even play Terror of the Peaks for my hand as well. Opponent actually gives us a Dragon Storm as opposed to Omniscience, not that it matters. Get our Tower of the Peaks. And Blade Wing.
and we'll be able to combo off right now. And by my count, this should be enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand seems pretty bad. We've got omniscience, which we don't want. Double packed's a bit much, and then we're missing our key cards to discard with mending, even though Solve can eventually get a copy of Mystic's Mastery. This seems a little better. And then probably ditch Gaze, and then Mending discards Dragonstorm, solve the equation, gets Mastery, and we just need to hit our land drops between Gaze and Mending. Should be feasible. Opponent Black-White could be a Reanimator deck as well. No turn to Priest, at least. If our opponent gets Saros Emissary in play, naming Creature, that also stops us from uh, killing the opponent, so not what we want to encounter here. But I'll take the two lanes, and uh, doesn't matter which order we draw them. So can go for Mending end of turn, or Flashback Gaze, but definitely want to discard Dragonstorm and still need to cast Solve the Equation. Opponent's got their own Mending. And yeah, hopefully no Seros Emissary. Ooh, looks like a Grease Fang deck instead with uh, vehicles to reanimate. That's not too bad. And no turn 3 Grease Fang. So we can Mending. And discard Dragonstorm Steam Vents, I suppose. And then we can play Spiral Bluff next turn. Don't know if the opponent's playing any counter spells, but Pact of Negation is an excellent draw to help us just in case. So if this resolves, next turn we should be able to go for it. Although I suppose our storm count wouldn't be quite high enough. So we kind of want our opponent to have some interaction so we can cast Pact. because we're missing a dragon in the graveyard and we're going for Dragonstorm instead of Ultimatum, so a Storm Count would be a little bit too low. Opponent has Grease Fang. Can get back. Sky Sovereign hit us for six. So I can still buy myself a bit of time here since we're not necessarily dead next turn. And yeah, flashback looting. Discard Bladewing means we can get there with a storm count of uh, one next turn. So probably no need to go for it right now. Even though there's a small chance that Pact of Negation could counter one mana counter from the opponent. So Bladewing Ultimatum discard it. And at 16, we should be safe even if they discard a Parhelion. It's going to be Sky Sovereign again. And for one mana, it can only really be a counter spell, which we can pact. So we should be safe. Ooh, Esper Sentinel, I guess it doesn't really matter. Could have been effective a little bit sooner in the game, but now we'll gladly make them draw. So Mastery can go for Emergent Ultimatum, which is kind of the long way since we already have a Dragon, but might as well show off Ultimatum, which doesn't always happen. A Dragon Storm, and already have solved the equation in hand. But the yeah, opponent knows that the writing is on the wall and concedes. Sweet. All right. So we got to show off our combo deck in a pretty wide variety of matchups. 
Got lucky not to face any graveyard hate along the way, which is of course the main weakness of our deck. There's a couple decks in Best of One that play main deck graveyard hate, mainly artifact decks that happen to have a random Tormod script, which is just a cheap artifact for their deck and uh, happens to be effective against us. I think there's some red black arcanist decks that also happen to have soul guide lantern in the main deck so those are the types of cards we want to avoid at all costs otherwise we're forced to go for the combo opponent blows up their artifact and then we have to rebuild our entire graveyard which usually takes way too long so we'll be dead in the meantime and then another card that can be quite effective against us is a card like thalia making our non creatures more expensive which is kind of a better version of Asper Sentinel against us at least. And then of course if the opponent has an aggressive start and they're on the play, they can easily kill on turn 4 before we manage to set up our combo. Decks like the Grease Fang combo deck, if they have a very good start, can get a Parhelion in play on turn 3 and then kill on turn 4. So that's an example of a deck that uh, can easily kill us before we combo off, even if we have it on turn 4. So by no means an unbeatable deck, but seems pretty well positioned in best of one at least, where there's not too much graveyard hate running around, and even against the few control decks you might run into, you do have Pact of Negation as a very useful tool, but if control decks kind of fade away, you can maybe replace Pact of Negation with more interaction, even potential ways to destroy artifacts, which can also go after some graveyard hate pieces like Soul Guide Lantern or Tormod Script, so you can force the opponent to blow them up before continuing to discard more cards. So Certainly a deck that can be fine-tuned according to the metagame, even though most of the cards are kind of locked in. There's a few flex slots available. I've also seen other versions out there that instead of playing Solve the Equation plus Omniscience, play a package with the Scholar of the Lost Trove plus Unburial Rites, and then bringing back their Scholar can also let them cast a Dragon Storm. So that's another approach that could also work. But so far I've been happy with the Solve the Equation plus Omniscience package instead. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.